Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. Or rather, welcome to this uh, haul, summer haul. It's been a it's been a while since I did one of these. And I've got a lot of books and a lot of dice and a lot of things over the past few months and I thought I might share just uh, at the start of the summer. Um, I know it's technically more of like a things I got over spring than summer, but I don't know, it's, it's June 10th. It's the start of summer in my book, so I'm going to go through and just, you know, give give a kind of um, an overview of the stuff that I got. I got a lot of stuff. I mean, this is, as you can see, there are stacks here that are quite thick, uh, many books <laughs> that I'll be going through today. And I don't, I'm not going to be doing a detailed review of each of them, but I'm just going to be doing a little bit of a quick flip through. And the reason I wanted to do it today is because this and the corresponding books, Nave, and the corresponding zines, uh, little, pa little pamphlet books that go with it, uh, just came. And I have been super, super excited for that. So I'm going to go through all of these, but I'm going to start with the Knave books. Um, and then I'll cover the rest. Actually, maybe I'll start with the dice, just because that's the least interesting. Um, I'm going to try to slide these off to the side. They're probably still going to be in the video, because I can't get them all the way off the screen. There's too many of them. Um, but I'm just going to start with this. Just some of my dice that I got, because there's some really cool ones. Um, I, I like this. This is my countdown die. I use this for my uh, underclock. I keep it out in front of me, and I just count it down as uh, as the time runs out and uh, so I like nice big visible die I like it <laughs> that's one of the ones I got I got these these are cool uh, these are just little um, time dice so this one they're both d12s uh, but this one just has the um, 1 through 12 on it but this one has uh, five minute seg uh, increments basically so you roll them together and you get a time in this case 8.05. Yeah, 8.05. Or you roll again, yeah, you get 5.05. It's just kind of cool to be able to run that. Um, and then you could do another one, 120. You could just roll you know, another D D2, or flip a coin, or whatever you want, to make it uh, AM or PM. Um, I like this a lot. I think these are great. I don't, I don't use them all the time, but if I'm running a tracking time in a dungeon, I'll keep them off to the side. And again, I'll just mark them up as time runs out. Um, players spend 10 minutes doing something, I'll flip it up 10 minutes and I have the time. So I like this. You could do it with regular D12s, uh, but I, I like just having these. <laughs> Every time I go to my friendly local game store, I always pick up a different set of dice. Something new, something weird. I've been doing that recently. Um, so I've gotten some new ones. These are the big rune dice. I'm sure people have seen these before. I like them. They're nice and big. Um, they're kind of cool looking. We've got kind of these intricate rune designs on them. I think that's kind of fun. Um, the problem with this set is that the, the D20 is weighted very badly. Uh, it rolls awfully. Almost always rolls twos. Um, but it's cool looking. So I don't know. Maybe it's a flaw in the design. Maybe it's just my particular die, but I've noticed that it rolls very badly. So and it's not superstition. It actually just is. Uh, it does roll badly, statistically. I've, I've played with it for a while now, and it, it rolls badly. These are all fine, but uh, I like the size of them. I like how cool they look. Um, I used to have a set of these a long time ago. Um, got, got thrown out, I think, at some point during a move. But the rest of them, um, yeah, super cool, and I, I'm glad that I have them. <laughs> I think they're pretty cool. Uh, I got a few really interesting ones. These are just standard. Uh, green dice. I like green. Green's my favorite color, and I love the way these look. So I got these very recently, um, just to match. I have a pound of dice that I used to use, and just had a bunch of random dice. But then I, I wanted to get particular sets because I like having sets of dice. You know, everyone does. It's one of the things we do. <laughs> so I got those green ones. They're nice, see through. Um, I got these dragon dice, which I thought were kind of cool. They're um, just red and gold, but some of them. Uh, like the, the, the D4 just has the dragon little symbol there. But uh, on all the rest, the dragon symbol is the highest number. And I thought that's kind of cool. It reminds me a little bit of um, Dragon Bane, which does the same thing, except the 1 is the dragon and the 20 is the demon, because it's a roll under system, so you want to roll low. Um, I don't know if you can see them. Anyway, I like them too. The, the D6 is kind of interesting. The numbers are on the side at an angle, which is not what you usually see. But I like these a lot. I think they're cool. Um, I use them from time to time. I might use them for particular... I like using particular dice for particular villains. So if I have in my current campaign, there's going to be a dragon kind of theme. And the villains are going to be using dragons, so I'll probably use these for them more than other people. Um, let's see, I got these tiny dice. 
I know this is kind of a silly way to start the video, but honestly, I just want to show these off because I like, I like dice and I like my dice and I figured I might as well. These are tiny, tiny little dice. You can see here's the D20 and here's how it compares to a regular one. And then of course that, <laughs> I like that comparison, both D20s. But um, these are just really, really tiny. The D4, barely, just a little, little tiny guy here. I use these a lot. I don't know, I like the way that they, I like the purple and I like just the, the feel of them. They're nice and smooth and <laughs> they're funny. Hold the tiny little dice here. So I like these guys too. I got these online. These were really cool. So these are D20s, or these are these are standard standard set of dice, but they're all shaped like potion bottles. So this is a D8. And the way it works is you roll it and it just spins along the along the let's see if I can do it. Yeah. And it stops on a number. Um near the D20 and it rolls and then stops. That was a 17. So, um, yeah, I think these are really cool. I got them. I think I got them on Etsy just because I like weird dice. There's a D6. And they're not perfectly balanced by any means. I don't use these for actual really gameplay. Um, but I think they look really cool and I like having them. And, you know, talking about weird dice. I don't know. I thought they were really fun. So I got a whole pack of these. And that's fun. Uh, so that's something else I got here. I got these, uh, this is a D6. It came from the same creator. It's a gelatinous cube. And so it's a really, first of all, it just looks really cool. Um, I like the way that that looks. It's a nice big D6. You can see that uh, here's a standard size. It's, it's bigger. I like to use it. And it's just my kind of go-to D6 that I use. And it's cool because it's like things floating in the gelatinous cube, right, for each of the numbers. So you've got one helmet, you know, four swords, um, got two boots, uh, six treasures. Uh, what's uh, five arrows, three weapons. Just, it's a cool, and it's a nice solid little D6, and I keep it out, so I like that guy. I got these, these are round dice, right? They're, 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 they're just round D6s, but they're weighted. They have a little, you can hear that. They have a weight in the inside so that they do stop rolling. They don't just go forever. Um, and then they kind of settle on one number. It's hard to read them. They're, they're not really for quick use. They're just, they're novelty dice, which I kind of like novelty dice, right? So got those, you can hold on to them and uh, I'll keep those around. I got these, which are really cool. These are poker dice. Uh, basically it has, um, what is it? Nine through ace. Uh, so you've got a nine, 10, jack, queen, king, ace on the different faces. And you're supposed to, be able to roll them and develop a poker hand. Obviously, you can't actually develop a poker hand because you don't have, you know, two through two through an eight. <laughs> but they're just kind of cool novelty dice. You just roll them and you get a, you know, a number of cards. And you could, I'm sure you could find a use for them. You could probably create a game with them. Um, that'd be kind of cool to create some kind of poker-ish game that you could use in-game. But they're really just for novelty's sake and for fun. That's why I got them. You could use them as D6s, but you'd have to translate them out. Uh, but still, I like them, if they're kind of cool. I got these guys. These are, actually I got them a few months ago and I might have mentioned them in another video. These are from uh, the Las Vegas Open. This is from uh, my, the 40K tournament I went to. Um, and I got the uh, MVP Las Vegas Open 2024. Uh, the MVP bundle basically went uh, high rollers. And so I uh, got you know, early registration, got a bunch of goodies and these dice were included, a set of these dice and I love them. They're great. They feel awesome. They have this really nice, you know, the green and black is great. In 40K, I play Necrons, and so they kind of have a Necron look to them too. So I like that. Um, but they just feel great, and they roll well. <laughs> I don't know if that's because they're weighted, but I just like the way that they roll. Lots of fives and sixes. Now, obviously, I don't really use these in game, um, but I just like having them around. I've definitely used them for fireballs before in D&D. &D. Um, so it's great to have. A lot of D6s, and I like D6 systems, and so I like having a, uh, a set of dice. I'm kind of creating my own D6 system, and, the, and in my test runs and stuff, I'm using these, so it's nice to have them nearby. It's great to have them. I like these guys. Uh, one last set, I forgot to actually pull these over, but one last set of dice I got are these. These are called Rand Dice, and they're little packs. And they're really cool. They're basically like adventure and uh, location and NPC generators. Little boxes of dice. And I'll show you what's, what's inside here. Let me take these out. Oh yeah, I have the Frontline Gaming. This is also one of the uh, dice trays. That came with the uh, LVO set. I like dice trays. So. so here's how it looks. You have little little dice. So I'm going to take them out. 
you have a little pamphlet in here that, that helps you decode what's on each of the dice. But essentially, you just have these symbols on each of the dice, which, as you can see, they're, they're not standard, obviously. Um, they've got different images on them and different, uh, like this is the money. It's got different coinage. Um, one gold, two gold, one silver, two silver, one copper, two copper. And you can use it for either just, you know, an indication of wealth or poverty. You could use it as a particular treasure die, whatever you wanted to do, stuff like that. But then there's just, you know, dice with different symbols on them. And the idea is you roll a whole handful. And in this case, you've created a uh, an adventure. And you've got different, and again, you read through here and it tells you what the different things are, but you've just got... Uh, roles and missions and locations and like side quests and threats and the moon, <laughs> what state phase of the moon it is, um, particular features in the location and the kind of treasure involved. So you just roll a quick handful of dice and you generate a, a rough one-shot adventure or, or in a side quest or something like that. I like things like that and I like doing it with dice because I love rolling dice. It's just super fun. We all like rolling dice. So uh, rather than just going through a, a book, and saying, you know, here's a d20 table, and I'm gonna roll on it and see what I get. You just use these. So this is the adventure one. This is the uh, random quests generator. A little random, I like the art on it. Cool little random dice. The other one is the random character generator. And you have a bunch more dice in there. And these correspond to, you know, like eye color. <laughs> There's the different races from D&D. &D. There's their prominent dispositions. You've got uh, their goals, their status, their their desires, um, their age, their prompt, their primary, their best stat and their worst stat. They've got the, the the red die, which has I like these. The standard six D and D stats: strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, and that's their worst. And you've got the green, which is their best. And you roll them together, and then you have like a you know if you have a basic system where you know you know at their best they're plus two, at their worst they're minus two or something like that. You just everything else is zero. You just roll to see what kind of character this is. This guy's very weak but highly charismatic. This guy is healthy, but really unwise. I like that kind of thing. So if, you, if, in, if you're in a pinch, you roll up a bundle of these dice and you have a random character. And again, I, I really like these. I kickstarted these this past, a couple months ago basically, and I think you can get them. I'll put links below to where you can get all this stuff. Well, I don't know about all my dice, but these two at least, uh, because, and, and the, uh, the potion dice if you're interested in those, because I think they're, I think, you know, some people might want to, grab them. I like that. That's just such a cool d20. Right? That's such a cool idea. Um, and uh, anyway, so that's my dice. Those are my dice, I should say. I think they're great. Uh, and I, I have a bunch more. Like I said, I have metal dice. I have wood dice. I have um, a pound of dice. I have a bunch of Warhammer. Uh, you know, different sets of d6s um, that I've collected over the years because I play 40k. So I've had, I have a bunch more dice, but I'm not going to go through those because I didn't get them in the past couple months. These are the ones that I've just been collecting over the past couple months. I might have a problem, but you know, who knows? Everyone, we all have our own our own issues when it comes to spending money on things. And when it comes to dice, if I see a set that I like, I will pretty much just buy it. Um, what I don't have are the dice within dice. That's the next thing I really want. I'm gonna grab those dice within dice. So anyway, these are all of the new dice that I got recently. I'm gonna set those aside and go to the books because that's what actually this is. This video was supposed to be about primarily. I'm gonna start with the Knave uh, collection. So I kickstarted this at the highest tier. I got the special edition book, and let me tell you, this book is gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. So first of all, you've got that beautiful, you know, color. It catches the light super well. You can see it's embossed with a little dungeon, basically, a little maze. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but the whole cover has this wonderful texture and you can feel the, the rooms and the hallways and everything. It's gorgeous. And the side cover, you've got Nave by Ben Milton, and then you've got the Questing Beast logo right there on the back. Beautiful again, and it has that texture embossed. It's that gold. So I am so happy that I got the special edition. The only thing this book is missing is a ribbon. That was my only, that was my only gripe. The, 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 the binding is excellent. The cover, it's a nice hard cover. It has a just a gorgeous texture. This book is incredible. And if you've seen the flip through that I did, you'll know the interior of this book is also just fantastic. All right, you're talking some of the best artwork in the industry. <laughs> you have one of the best games, just in terms of simple OSR games out there. Uh, and then of course, 
the tables in this book, the random tables, many of which I've printed out and put into my adventure creation binder. Um, you guys can check the different reviews uh, I've done of this before in other videos because this is just so good. I'm not going to go through in detail here. But I am so happy that I got this book. Finally. <laughs> I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for the Knave 2nd Edition. Beautiful bound book. Great artwork throughout. And then the back covers. This is just so fantastic. Great work to Ben. Uh, Questing Beast. Uh, this is, I think, done out of Swordfish Isle, so Jacob over there too. Just just fantastic effort. I know it was hard. <laughs> a lot of a lot of work went into it, and uh, it absolutely shows. This is a labor of love, one of the best books out there today in terms of quality and uh, interior and exterior. So well done. Absolutely well done. Nave Second Edition is a fantastic, fantastic work. And again, Ben should be very, very, very proud of, of all he's done there. Um, and everybody in getting shit involved should be. I think it's fantastic work. Okay, let's look at the uh, the supplements or the books that come with it. These are little pamphlets, staple bound. They're great. This is the uh, Maze Rats. Uh, finally, it's in a, an official print version instead of just the pamphlet print and fold, which you can obviously have always gotten. But this one has a nice cover. Really cool image there. And it goes to both the back and the front. Just a fantastic... Fantastic piece of art. And then Maze Rats again. If you know Maze Rats, I've done a review of it. So, so, so good. The tables and the tables and the tables in this book. One of the best books, again, out there in terms of value. You get this book and these random tables, and you don't really need any other books of random tables. Maybe, maybe Nave Second Edition has more of the same and, and bigger, but this is a great place to start for random tables. You get this, you're going to have enough for quite a few adventures and sessions. So that's a great one. And then you have two adventure, one is an adventure, one is a compilation. So you have the Waking of Willoughby Hall, which I have reviewed before, and this is another great, again, staple bound version. Great piece of art there on the cover. Waking of Willoughby Hall is one of my favorite adventures out there. I've run it three times, every time has been a blast, every time has been wildly different, and every time has been incredibly enjoyable. Both for my, for my sake and the players, my players talk about this adventure all the time. I wish Ben would do another one like this. <laughs> and this really should be the model for a lot more adventures. I'm not sure why it hasn't been copied. I know it has been copied a couple times, but <laughs> it, should be the, it should be a model for a certain style of adventure, at least. And then you get Summer's End, which is a collection of a bunch of his one-page hexes, or one-page dungeons. Uh, and so you have, like, this is the Summer's End Mountain, and there's a whole bunch of factions and NPCs and things going on, and it's all laid out in this one-page spread. You can put this in as a hex in your world, and you've got a ton of stuff going on there. The same thing here, the Raiders of Wolf Sea. If you happen to have a, a, sea, a sea game or a sea hex, you can add this in. It's a bunch of them. Uh, the Sands of Caldemir, Caldemar, excuse me, Caldemar. I think you're Deserty One. Throw this into a desert campaign. There's the Witches of Willemire. Another great adventure, hex adventure. All right, the Wizards of Sparrow Keep. Another great one. These are all just awesome. A little one shot. Uh, or not one-shots, excuse me, but like little locations. The Alchemist's Repose. I think this is one of the very, very first adventures that Ben ever put together, Questing Beast ever put together for his patrons back in the day, because I was a patron back then too. And uh, I think this is the very first one. I think. But there's a whole bunch of other ones in here too. Drums in the Deep. And just, just one-page adventures that you could run prob primarily, you know, for Maze Rats uh, or Knave, but you could run them for any OSR game. There's They're basically... System Neutral, The Witch, The Wolf, and The King's Thirst, a great last adventure. Um, just such a fantastic little book. And this whole set, you guys should pick them up if you possibly can. They're great. Really good books. So, again, well done to Ben and everybody over there. Um, great, great books. So I'm going to be going through some of the things that I kickstarted and that have finally come uh, over the past few over the past few months as well. So these are, this is the Puppet Hands Guide to the uh, Rainy City and the Restless Dead, which are two little booklets that cover a particular setting in this OSR style. And it's done in like as an in-world artifact with this great um, imitation of old Renaissance art throughout. These are tiny, these are not tiny, they're small books, but they're, it's part of a set and you can go and there's more than this. I just have these two in print. Um, 
But it's a great little setting, this rainy city with a lot of weird things going on and weird factions. And the Restless Dead, if you are interested in running really cool, weird haunts and creatures that have their own um, history and uh, you know what they do and why they do what they do, a bunch of dead ghosts and spirits and specters and things, this book is great. You can get them. I think you can get them on Drive Through RPG. Um, I think you can also get the print versions there as well. So I'll, again, I'll put links to all, all these books. These are both great. And again, if you're interested in a new setting that you haven't seen before, at some point maybe I might detail it more. But uh, it's a great little setting, and uh, I'm glad I have these in print. I kickstarted kick these, got them both, and uh, yeah, very happy with them. <laughs> I think they're great. Cool little books. I got this one, which is. Shadow over Gloomshire. This is for Dragonbane. This is a great sort of gothic adventure. Gothic, not necessarily horror, but yeah, a little gothic horror uh, adventure for Dragonbane. I like Dragonbane a lot. I think it's got kind of a weird mixed reception online. People just aren't terribly interested in it. Um, I blame the ducks. <laughs> I like them because it reminds me of like Darkwing Duck and DuckTales and stuff, which I was a big fan of as a kid. But uh, a lot of people don't like that necessarily. The anthropomorphic animal, wolfkin, um, duck people in your games. You could always take them out. But this is a great little adventure. Um, it's got great art, great maps, cool setting, cool uh, cool hometown, great NPCs, and some cool magic items. If you're playing Dragon Bane, you should check this one out. Um, even if you're not, maybe if you're thinking about doing a little gothic, you know, there's a little, like, <laughs> Van Helsing duck, a demon hunter. Uh, it has a couple additional classes for Dragon Bane, too, the demon hunter and the paladin. So if you're interested in running those sorts of games. Shadow over Gloomshire. And it's it's a it's a nice little, you know, again, staple bound booklet. I like it a lot. It would be very easy to to run from at your table. If you play Dragon Bane, highly recommend you check this out. So that's a cool one. Um, this is the Tomb of Astrobaris, which I have reviewed before and I've referenced elsewhere. And this is Lost Heretic Press. Um, I really like Lost Heretic Press. Uh, this is one that I backed um, on Kickstarter. This came with uh, magic item cards and a little sticker. But this is the tomb, uh, this is the gauntlet, the, the 24 plus level zero character gauntlet, which is awesome and so different than uh, most other gauntlets out. Let's see if I can go to the back page. Again, I've reviewed this before, but you guys should check out both the review and the book. Um, where is the dungeon. Here it is. There's the dungeon as a whole. It's on the first page. Uh, it's a huge dungeon. A huge gauntlet, which is just not what you usually see. Usually gauntlets are tiny. This is a massive level zero adventure for 24 plus characters. So they're just going to be wave after wave of dead <laughs> characters here. And I love that. It's a cool, you know, mummy filled, trap filled dungeon. Tomb. There's some great art in here. This is a fantastic level zero. One of the best level zero gauntlets. It's, it's specific in its tone. Um, you know, if you're not, if you're level zero, if you're planning to start a campaign, this is going to be a very specific tone to your campaign. But if you're just running a one shot or you don't, or you want to play in that kind of tone, this is a fantastic level zero adventure. One of the best out there, I think. So the Tomb of Ustrobaris, and I'm glad I have it in print. It's very, very thin, very, but again, I think it'd be very easy to run from in this little booklet form. And a couple more. These are ones I'm a little less keen on. I think they're good. They're fine. Uh, I was interested in them when I backed them, and then I got them and saw the result. And I, I don't know. I'm not disappointed exactly because I didn't have, you know, just like I wasn't, you know, anticipating them very highly or like, oh, I got to get these. But I backed them because they seemed interesting, and they're pretty interesting at times, but they're just not my favorite. Um, the Land of Mist is a setting for old school essentials with a whole bunch of extra races and classes and stuff. And and it's an interesting world. My, my problem with this book is that while much of the art is great, it's all over the place. The, 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 the vibe is just, it's very hard to nail down. I would have preferred less art that was more consistent than kind of the all over the place. Some of it's very, very cutesy and kitty, and some of it is much more serious. And uh, I think I'm not a big fan of this kind of style of art. It's just not my, not my bag. Um, you know, this is better, in my opinion. And there's other uh, other styles. That one piece I saw was really good early on. There's some good pieces throughout that I really like, but it's just that inconsistency in tone in the art. The game, the, the world itself is also pretty cool. It's it's interesting. It's a kind of a jungle. It's a very different kind of setting that you're going to run into in a lot of other games. 
So it's worth checking out, I think, certainly, and, you know, go through a preview. I mean, at some point, I might run through it in more detail, the PDF, so you guys can get a real sense of what this is like. But again, just like this sort of art. I'm not a big fan of it. I know that, again, some people love that, obviously. Some people love that style, and they're really into it. It just tends not to be my favorite. But it has a lot of extra creatures in here, classes, races, or old school essentials. So if you're running an old school essentials game, you might want to check this out. Um... Uses a good worldographer map there in the back. Cool. Well, it's a cool world. Don't get me wrong. I think the setting itself is good. It's the presentation that kind of puts me off a little bit, rather than the the world itself. Um, but but I'm glad I have it, and I'm glad I got it in physical form. It's nice to have these uh, little physical booklets for for you know various things. This one is what how long? 120 pages. So it's actually quite big. It's it's small, but it's I mean in terms of its physical dimensions, but it's a good book and uh, definitely worth checking out, especially if you don't mind that kind of art, that kind of uh, style. And if you're looking for a kind of a jungly, um, you know, campaign setting for old school essentials with mists and dragons and underwater adventures and, you know, <laughs> pretty cool. So worth checking out. The next one is Kogarashi which um, I have talked about before. It was one of, when I talked about things that I backed and you should too, it was a video, I don't know, back in Zine Quest days. This is a Zine Quest product. Um, the art is all AI generated. As far as I can tell, it's almost, it's all AI generated. And sometimes that's very apparent, other times it's not. So my problem with AI generated art is that it is all, it all looks the same. I mean, what I mean, you can definitely pick different styles of AI art, right? You can, you can get different styles. And the results are often quite good. Like the art, I think the art in here is not bad by any means. Um, but it just contributes along with the font choice and the sort of the presentation. It, con it contributes to feel a little, I'm not sure, a little, well, auto-generated. I mean, the book itself, the, the game, Kogarashi, the D6 system, is a good system. It's a true D6 system. Um, you can check that out. There's other things based on that. Uh, and it's it's cool. It's got you know, if you're interested in sort of an east an eastern setting, um, it's it's cool. There's a lot of cool classes in here. There's a lot of cool ideas in here. And again, some of the the art is technically very good, um, but that it, there are details that are weird in each of these pieces that just again put the art off putting make the art off putting to me often at times that things don't actually aren't consistent and i know that that, that could be true with regular you know human <laughs> human art as well but it just it does often strike me but when i'm looking at this book and so it's it's while i i love the black and white and i think that if this had been done by you know human art uh and if the font choice i think it just the, pres the, the final presentation doesn't come together for me as one cohesive thing. It feels a little artificial. I don't totally mind that 100%. I'm glad I have this book, and I think it'd be fun to run from and, and fun to use. Uh, I'm glad I backed it, and I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of fun with this, especially if you just don't mind that sort of presentation disconnect of the AI art or whatever. You know, I think a lot of people just don't mind it. So if that's the case for you, then... This is something definitely worth checking out. And, and I went into a little bit more detail on the um, on the first video when I talked about it. So I'm glad it's finally come. You know, kudos to them for, for getting this through, for get, doing the uh, the whole Kickstarter and being successful with it. I think that's awesome. It, it, it was a little less um, engaging than I hoped it would be in terms of its presentation. But, you know, when it comes to the game itself, I haven't run it yet. So I can't say if I really, really dislike or like the game itself. Um, and certainly there's a lot in here that I think is really cool. So check it out, see if it's if it's something that you'd be interested in, Kogarashi, again, I'll put links below. And if people are interested, I can do a more uh, detailed review of it at some point in the future. All right, I'm gonna look through these really quickly. I'm not gonna go through the whole box sets, but I, I got the Mouse Herder box set again, <laughs> and I got the Estate. So the Mouse Herder box set I initially had, and I gave it away because uh, it was perfect for my nephews, and I thought they would really like it, so I gave it to them, but I wanted my own copy again, because I had the PDFs and all that stuff, but I wanted another physical one, so I got it. You guys are familiar with Mouse Herder, I'm sure, but it's just a, such a delightful, delightful book. I love that cover, right? You got that hole in the oak and it opens up into a beautiful image there of the owl <laughs> oh man this book is this no when we're talking about the delightful cohesive presentation this book 
it has a delightful, cohesive presentation. And the, um, the tables in this book are great. The rules for generating a hex crawl and factions are great. The way the magic works with the tablets and the recharging, fantastic. Again, uh, at some point I'm going to do a deep dive into Mouse Raider because I love this system and I love these books. So check this one out. I've done a flip through of the PDF um, a while back. The box obviously comes with character sheets and punchable, um, there's time trackers and player player trackers, and then there's punchable um, little item slots in the inventory. There is a uh, Honey in the Rafters, which is an adventure, comes with it, and then there is a screen. I'll show you guys the screen if you haven't already seen it, because it is gorgeous, as you might expect from a book that looks like this. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous screen. Beautiful. Mouse Ritter is one of my favorite non Shadow Dark products out there in the world today. Uh, it, I, honestly, in a lot of ways, it is my favorite, just in terms of the way I feel about it. I, I think it's so beautiful. It comes with a little pen, too, branded. I, it reminds, takes me right back to Redwall. It takes me right back to, um, you know, uh, the Secrets of Nim or the, rat, uh, the Rats of Nim, Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. Uh, and The Rescuers, and all these books that I read when I was a kid, and the movies that I saw as a kid. So, The Roquefort Gang. I don't think if anyone, <laughs> no one ever knows what that one is, The Roquefort Gang. I read that book. And then The Estate, which is a, a com collection of adventures set in a hex, which is a, or in a in hex crawl, sandbox, which is a, a little estate, human dwelling. The box, by the way, is delightful. It has, the box itself has art on the side. Beautiful. And then you've got these little character collection backpacks, right? Because you have little tokens and stuff, so you hand these out to your characters, the players, and they can put their character sheet in here, as well as the items that they have and put it all in their actual backpack and keep it all together. Little envelopes, that's so awesome. And then you've got a whole bunch of little pamphlet adventures with the Ember Tree, for example, and the things that come with them. Uh, the Ticking Tower and the items that come with that. And it's all color-coded, so the, 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 the ember tree has the red sheets, the ticking towers, the pink sheets. These have the green. Rush. So beautiful. I love, 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 love Mouse Ray. Uh, a whole bunch more at the back. There is the estate as a whole, which runs through it. And then the, uh, some maps. This is the race that you have in one of the adventures. And then the, uh, let's open this up. The player map of the estate, which is beautiful. Again, this is something that is definitely, definitely, definitely worth checking out. If you've never seen Mouse Raider before, if the idea of playing as cute little mice knights appeals to you, then you should check it out. Little town, Brickport. Because it feels to me. I love this game. I love playing it with my nephews. I love playing it every chance that I get. Highly, highly recommend checking out Mouse Ritter. Again, I'm going to do a deep dive of both of these uh, relatively soon. Maybe not right away, but hopefully this summer. Because this is a fantastic little collection. Both of them. Check them out. Okay. The, the next one that I'm going to be going through is actually a set that I got on sale for... Um, this is from Third Kingdom Games. It's four very thick books. These are their ultimate hex crawl books, their bestiary, populated hexes, monthly books. These are pretty familiar. I think a lot of people are familiar with these out there. Um, but these are great. These are just full of creatures and ideas, hexes, um, adventures pre-made that you can go through. And there was a big sale. They were, they were. Um, I think these were like 50, 75% off or something like that. So I grabbed them. I, I, I kickstarted the second volume of this, so it's coming. I have, and I was like, I don't have volume one, so I grabbed volume one. The funny thing is, I think I kickstarted it in PDF, and then I have this one physically, so that'll be kind of a disconnect, but maybe I'll get the second one in physical at some point. But these are great. If you guys have never seen these, these are just great old school essentials, um, lots of creatures, great art. Uh, this feels this feels just like a. a a bunch of guys coming together, making a great old school world and setting, um, putting their ideas and adventures out there. I love these. One of these great ones is there's like this 
<laughs> uh, there's too many things to go through because I mean it's just tons of hexes, tons of adventures. But one of them was this: you find this frozen, this adventuring party that's frozen in time. Cool little map there, ruin. And you have to try to find, or you don't have to, but you can try to find a way to save them. And most of them are dead, not all of them. And or they're petrified. They're petrified, not frozen in time. They've been petrified. And one of them, it, it cast a. Uh, preservation spell on herself before so she's she's not dying or she's not dead um, like the others you have to resurrect but if you, but she could actually be turned back into flesh and, and then she'd be alive but the rest you could destroy and resurrect or something like that and bring them back um, there's just a bunch of hexes and villages cities adventures creatures again just a fantastic little set of books here and uh, when I saw that they were on sale I'd, I'd kept on my you know I'd, I'd seen populated hexes for a long time, and it, it was always on my radar. And then when I saw a sale, I was like, ooh, I'm in. So I grabbed it, and I'm very happy that I did in, in the physical form, because I love physical books. That's my preference. These are particular regions. Ultimate Hex Crawls. This is the Basilisk Hills. Uh, this is the Lake of Abominations. And this is a huge region. This is what? Let me see how many pages is this. Um, 273, 272 pages. So, fantastic region that you can that you can add into your games. Really cool. And again, I highly recommend you guys check them both out. Some great maps, great art, hexes, what's going on there, locations. Really cool. Really, really cool. So, highly recommend you guys check these out if you haven't already. I know a lot of people have. But I think they're great. Really cool. Okay, last and uh, last in the order is Dark Places and Demogorgons, the Ultimate Edition. I got this a while back because I thought the art, I love the art on the cover and I wanted to try it out. This is another one that I'm a little bit less thrilled with just because there's a little sticker that came with it. Just because I don't think it's actually what I... I don't know what, I, what my vibe is. I already have... Games like this. Um, I'm thinking of Dark Streets, or Darker Secrets, um, and just that, that sort of vibe. Um, the presentation is good. It's basically like a teen, you know, 80s horror sci-fi adventure, you know, Stranger Things thing. And, and there are settings like that. There's kids on bikes. There's, um, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff like that. This one does have a, have a uh, ribbon, which is cool. I got the PDF of this, so I've, I've gone through it before. Now, one, one of my issues with this book, and this is going to sound like a nitpick, but it actually kind of bothered me, was that there's repeat art. The, the, the same piece of art is used many times, multiple times, often, throughout this book. You'll see it early on, and you'll see it late uh, in a different a different context, but it's the same piece of art. Now, it's fine. Um, it's, not the, it's, not, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but it just, it was, I'm like, wait, I've seen that before. And then I'd flip back and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's in the same book. Um, some people love this game, so don't get me wrong. I think that there's a lot to be said for it. Um, it's cool. It's definitely cool. It's not, I mean, again, I have games like this before. I have other games like this. Um, I love the, the, the cover art because I think that's, what's that, Hanker and Furnail? I think that's Runehammer games there on the front. Uh, yeah, Runehammer. I love Runehammer art, so <laughs> I'm a sucker for that. The Demogorgon, two-headed beast, head to headed demon. Um, character sheet on the back. It's kind of interesting to have a character sheet on the back. It's heavy. It's high quality. Don't get me wrong. It's glossy. It's cool. It's got a nice ribbon. It's bound well. Um, but I just don't know if I'll play this much. I don't play Dark Streets and Darker Secrets, and I think that's very similar in its vibe. This one's more 80s than that. That one's just more like, you know, <laughs> dark fantasy, uh, dark sci-fi. This is, this is much more in that tone, and I, I don't know, I haven't gone through Kids on Bikes or things like that, but um, it just it strikes that same place. It seems like a kind of an era game, um, you know, a, 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 a moment kind of game, like a thing that's really popular for a moment, or capitalizing on something that's really popular at the moment, which was Stranger Things, and I, I, I think it maybe missed its window by a little bit. I haven't heard much about this um, since it came out. But, uh, but it's cool. And again, if you guys want that sort of more 80s, old school vibe, this is definitely one of the, a, a game worth checking out. Um, 
if you want that. I mean, it's a little earlier than Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but uh, but yeah, you know, Lost Boys, um, Goonies. Maybe Goonies is a little bit too kiddy, but uh, you could probably run that sort of adventure for here, right? I mean, any of the 80s slashers or horror movies or <laughs> killer clowns from outer space, whatever. Uh, you could check this one out, and I think it would fit that vibe. So definitely worth looking into, guys. Well, that is, that's it. Those are the books that I got over the course of the past couple months for this summer haul. Um, hope some of these have been interesting to you. I will put links below to where you can get the stuff that you can get. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in another video.